Hey guys, I've just created a new sound set for the Kong Wave State with around 80 performance patches of nine world famous pop hits from the 80s. And I've chosen bands and artists like Chaka Khan, Michael Jackson, and Toto. I can honestly say that all these artists inspired and influenced me a lot as a musician and the reason for making this sound set was that I wanted to give you the opportunity to play all these beautiful songs almost completely on the wave state. I will put the download link in the description of this video and I've also attached video instructions how to play all these keyboard parts so that might make it easier for some of you guys to just use my sounds right away. I've also added MIDI files for all those separate tracks of all songs. So you have an additional guide how to lay hands on all those different tracks. The Michael Jackson song Thriller was released in 1982 and written by Quincy Jones and Rod Temperton, who also did a lot of co-writings for artists like Donna Summer, uh, Herbie Hancock, Mariah Carey, George Benson and a lot more. The song was produced by Quincy Jones and originally called Starlight Sun or Starlight Love. And you can still find all these demo tracks of the whole album Thriller on the internet. Greg Fillingales was one of the wonderful keyboard players on that track. And since we write the year 1982, I guess we hear a lot of Jupiter 8, CS80, GS1, Minimook and Oberheim OBX sounds and maybe even an Oberheim 4 voice. Okay, the first sound is the intro sound of the song Thriller and look in the right hand you have this great sounding Juno pad and in the left hand on the C, I think it's a key, C3. Uh, it starts the drums, the bass and this cool wind effect, you know. And together it sounds like this. Which moves right away <laughs> into the next great beautiful brass intro of that song with the Jupiter 8 and this brass section on top. So what we get is brass sound on the right hand and uh, with a moog bass and the drums on this key again. So in, in combination it's like Further to the verse, we just move the modulation wheel and we have this, this um, Juno pad in the right hand. sound of the song is the middle eight part with these nice crescendo brasses you know so again the lower C starts the drums in the left you have the mini mook bass sound and in the right hand in the right hand you only have one I think in the right hand you have the horns <laughs> You 
see when you move the modulation wheel, you switch this crescendo brass sound to a um, very high brass tutti sound for the end. You know, for this end melody. The next sound is the outro patch for that song. So in the on this C key again you have the drums starting and the bass, the guitar, and this very special low lead synth. In the right hand you have the church organ. switches then to a bigger church organ sound with a pad in the back. And what else have we got? We have this this great big brass sound on the full keyboard. We have the crescendo horn sound on the full keyboard. And the Juno pad. song I Feel For You, performed by marvelous singer Chaka Khan, was written in 1979 by Prince, later covered by the Pointer Sisters in 1982, I think, and then two years later covered again by Chaka Khan. This really successful version was produced by Arif Mardin and the harp was played by Stevie Wonder, and you can hear it in the intro and in the solo part. The rap vocals were done by Melly Mel. If I would take a guess, I would say you hear a lot of Memory Mook or Oberheim OBX brass sounds and maybe a PPG or a Synclavier for those metallic sounding pads. What I did find was the info about the drum machine and I think it was an Oberheim DMX. The first sound is the intro sound. So with the lower E key, let's say with the first chord, we start the drums. And in the right hand, you have the harp sound. So this is the verse sound, the verse patch. So the, this key, the C3 starts the drums again. And in the left hand you have this synth brass sound. In the right hand you have this glassy uh, PPG synth clavier pad for the bridge. with the mod wheel you control the swells. The next sound is the chorus sound. 
So the drums start again on the C. In the left hand you have again an uh, analog brass pad and in the right hand you have another PPG pad. And the mod wheel switches the brass pad to a, a bigger, let's say, Ob Oberheim OBX brass. This is the middle eight part. So we have the big brass in the right hand for this chord repetitions and the C key, C key <laughs> starts the drums again and in the left hand we have this bell pad. So the next patch is perfect if you are not so experienced with the rhythm. Everything starts with the first chord. And you can add just the left hand with the spell pad here. So the rhythm comes automatically. This is the big brass sound for the intro. And this is a nice and neat brass pad. One of the PBG pads. And the second one. The song Africa from Toto, which was released in 1982, was written by keyboard player David Page and drummer Jeff Porcaro, a documentary about Africa with depictions of the plights and sufferings inspired David Page to write this epic tune. A little tech talk. The synth brass sound is coming from the legendary Yamaha CS80, a polyphonic analog monster synth with really incredible sound possibilities and the FM kalimba sound that you can hear on that song was played on a Yamaha GS1. It's an FM synth that looks like a grand piano and works a bit like the DX7, but then only with four operators running. Look, this is the first Africa patch. It's quite complete to play the whole song. So with the C you start the drums and the rest is quite distributed over the whole keyboard. In the, in the left hand for the bass notes and this that changes to, to a real bass guitar for the verses and we have the this kind of a CS80 brass sound and on the E there's a kalimba wave sequence and look if you move the mod wheel to the top you can just mute the kalimba sequence and play the verse. Guys, if you like my videos, hit subscribe and the notification button because that will definitely help me to produce a lot more of this content. By the way, if you are interested in more wave state sounds, I made a sound set called the sounds of the 80s synth pop hits.
Another one is called The Sounds of the Trevor Horn Era. I will put also these links in the description of this video and now back to the 80s pop hits. The next sound is this flute kalimba solo sound, you know. And I made two versions. I made one, one easy version if you want to play it with one hand. So you have the second voice already implemented in, in this one sound and it's quantized to that key. Now I add the kalimba with the mod wheel. And we have an alternate patch for the chorus with a different synth brass sound. The next sound is the sound for the real thrill seekers. So this is the solo sound for both hands. The next sound is the flute sound on the whole keyboard. And this is the main brass CS80 sound on the full keyboard. And we have the marimba sound on the full keyboard. Jackson song Rock With You was released in 1979 on his album Off The Wall and it was written by Rod Temperton who wrote a lot of tracks on this and later on on the Thriller album. As we are talking about the pre-80s I assume the synth used on this song uh, and I'm talking about that one in the intro melody and the percussive solo part could be a mini moog. And not to forget the beautiful Fender Rhodes. Okay, the first sound is the intro sound. Again, with the key C, with the lowest key C, with we start the drums. And look in the in the left hand, you have kind of a, a warm brass pad for the chords, and you can add a guitar, a funk guitar, with a pitch knob. right hand of course you have the Mook Mandalay sound. And look with the mod wheel you switch from the lead sound to this Mercato string section. The next sound is the verse page. So on the lowest C you have the drums again. In the left hand we have this brass chord pad. In the, in the right hand we have the roads. The Fender roads. And we can add a guitar again with a pitch knob.
this is the chorus sound. So we have the drums again, the chord sound and the brass section. solo sound. We have drums again and the chord pad and in the right hand we have this percussive solo sound. This is a beautiful Jupiter 8 pad. Wow, what a patch, what a pad. And this is the road sound. first lead sound from the intro. And the second lead sound from the solo. The World Hit Rosanna by Toto was released in 1982, I think, and is still one of the most aesthetic handcrafted band performances I ever heard on a pop record, I must honestly say. Even after so many decades, this epic composed keyboard solo part still totally catches me. In an interview I read that the main solo part was played on the Yamaha CS80, you know, this brassy synth sound. And these falling glissandos in the middle and the end of the solo were done on a Hammond organ. I've never thought of that. And mixed with a, must have been like a Moog modula, modular sound, triggered with an Roland MC4 sequencer. If you guys have additional and or uh, other information, please share it with us. The first sound is the verse sound of Rosanna. So in the right hand, we have the piano and in the left hand we have the organ. And um, the next sound is the pre-chorus. If, if you move the mod wheel, you have the harder Hammond organ for the transition into the chorus. And the next one is the chorus. The next patch is for this wonderful solo, so let me demonstrate it first and afterwards I explain all these parts. the top C key you have the glissandos so you can hit it once and it always takes a while until it ends. You have one for the middle part and one for the end on the mod wheel. And also the solo sound changes so this is for the first solo part and in the middle it changes to a kind of a rezo swing sound. For these glide effects 
beautiful solo. And the next one is the the Hammond P3 on the complete keyboard. And the soft organ. And this is one part of the solo sound, a GP8 brass. And this is the piano sound on the whole keyboard. This is also a part of this big solo sound, this resonant synth. And this is a solo synth over the whole keyboard. The song Ain't Nobody, performed by wonderful singer Chaka Khan, was written by the Rufus keyboard player Hawk Wolinski and um, released in 1983. Hawk Wolinski used to play the Sequential Circuits Prophet 5 quite often at the time, so I would go in that direction according to the lead sound in the intro. And I would guess Minimoop for the bass and the drums I read are a combination of the Lin LM1 and the wonderful drummer J.R. Robinson. The first sound is the intro sound of Ain't Nobody. So in the right hand we have the solo sound, the chord sound in the left hand and the key E flat starts the drums, the bass and the sequence. The next sound is the verse sound of Ain't Nobody. So again with the E flat key we start the bass and the drums. And in the right hand we have the chord synth. I think originally it's also from the Prophet 5. So all together it sounds like this. This is the chorus patch of that song. So in the right hand we have the strings. And in the left hand we have the chord synth. And the, and the key E flat starts the drums, the bass and the sequence. We have the second intro. The next sound is the bridge sound. So in the right hand we have the lead sound again. And in the left hand we have the chord sound. And the, the E flat key starts the drums and the bass again. sound is the minimum bass. And we have this cool bell sequence from the second intro.
And this is the Prophet 5 synth page. Human Nature was released in the end of 1982 on the Michael Jackson album Thriller and written by Steve Porcaro, the Toto keyboard player. And he just started writing it while the song Africa was being mixed inside the studio. Imagine that. Wow. So again, we hear a lot of CS80 sounds because I read Steve Porcaro had three of them. And mini Moog bass sounds and I guess the DX7 for these glassy e piano sounds. The first sound is the intro sound of Human Nature. So in the right hand you have this lead brass sound and in the left hand you have this FM e piano sound. And with the mod wheel if you move it to the top you have this bell pad on top of the brass sound for the intro and the upper G starts drums. The next patch is kind of an kind of a help patch for the intro sound. That means you can just start pressing the notes with the help of the wave sequences. And you don't have to repeat all these notes, you know. You know, just take it as an additional tool to, to practice the song. So let's move further. So, ah, the next patch is the verse patch. So you start the drums and the guitar pattern with the key of C and in the left hand you have the Minimoog bass and, and in the right hand you have the FM piano. That's the chorus sound of Human Nature. So again, you start drums and the guitar with the key of the C, with the lowest C. Uh, in the left hand, you have the Minimoog bass again, and in the right hand, you have the you have the FM piano. A beautiful song. This is the FM piano sound on the whole keys. So and the next patch is the intro sound on the whole keyboard. You know this synth brass. This patch is the, the post-chorus sound of human nature. It's kind of an FM brass sound. The song Bad from Michael Jackson was released in 1987 and produced by Quincy Jones. By the way, the last of three albums he produced for Michael Jackson. The thing is that Bad should actually become a duet between Prince and Michael Jackson. But in the end, Prince declined because he said it would become a hit record anyway, and he was very right about it. Greg Finnegan's and Stefan Stefanovic played the keyboard parts on the track. Uh, I didn't find any secure info about the 
synths used on the track, but I would assume Lin 9000 for the drums and some Jupiter 8 Synclavier DX7 mini book for the bass sound. And the Hammond organ solo on the track was played by jazz organ player Jimmy Smith. So the first bad patch is the, the verse sound. So we have the organ in the right hand and we have kind of a string sound for the counter melody in the left hand. And the drums starts on C, so together it sounds like this. The next sound is the pre-chorus patch and the chorus patch of Bad. So we have the Moog bass in the left hand, kind of a Fairland voice synclavier pad in the right hand. And if you move the mod wheel now to the top, we have this brass kind of stab sound for the pre-chorus. And if we start the beat, it sounds like this. And if we move the mod wheel now back to the bottom, we have the sound of the chorus again. The next, patch, the next patch is the organ and guitar verse. That means in the right hand we have the guitar pattern, you know this funky guitar pattern. In the left hand we have got the organ and the C key starts the drums and the bass. Ah, we have the funk guitar on the whole keyboard. And the organ on the full keyboard. And the big pad from the pre-chorus and the chorus. The Michael Jackson song PYT was released in 1982 on the Thriller. Said that a lot of times today on the Thriller album. <laughs> and um, written by James Ingram and Quincy Jones, the famous keyboard player Michael Bodica played the emulator vocal samples and the vocoder on this track and the great keyboardist Greg Fillingaines also contributed some tracks on this song. The first sound of PYT is the intro sound. So we have a hi-hat pattern, a guitar sequence and a pad. And we have this vocal synth sound for the right hand. The next patch is the verse patch of PYT. So with the key of C, the drums and the bass sequence starts. And in the right hand, we have this plug synth.
the next sound is the chorus. So we have the bass sound and the chord synth with the guitar underneath. Wow. In the right hand we have the lead sound. You see everything is a bit narrow because we don't have so many keys on this keyboard. And with the C key we start the drums again. This is a patch of the pre-chorus, um, so the drums and the bass start again on the C. In the left hand we have a road sound. And in the right hand we have this kind of, I, I think, emulator voice vocal synthy sound. This is the chord synth sound from the chorus. The next one is this solo synth sound. I think it's originally from the Jupiter 6. Next one is this voice synth from the intro or the pre-chorus. Wow, emulator in the house. Okay guys, that's it from me for today. I hope you liked the video and have fun with the sounds, play around with them and Take your time to practice all these parts because I know some some of the tracks are really heavy to play. And um, write me a comment which sounds you missed or even which kind of sound sets you would love to have in the future for the wave state. So enjoy everything and I see you in my next video.